Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, as you understand it, the mind and dharmas create the conditions that produce the mind consciousness. Is this consciousness produced because of the mind, such that the mind is its realm, or is it produced because of dharmas, such that dharmas are its realm? Suppose, Ananda, that it were produced because of the mind. In your mind, there certainly must be thoughts. These give expression to your mind. If there are no dharmas before you, the mind does not give rise to anything apart from conditions it has no shape. Thus, what use would the consciousness be? Commentary. Moreover, Ananda, as you understand it, you heard this drama in the past. The mind and dramas create the conditions. The organ of your mind and the dust of dramas together produce conditions that produce the mind consciousness. In the midst of these conditions, the mind consciousness arises. Is this consciousness produced because of the mind? Is it because of the mind that the mind consciousness arise, arises, such that the mind is its realm, or is it produced because of dharmas, or is it dharmas that produce the mind consciousness, such that dharmas are its realm? Suppose Ananda that it were produced because of the mind. Suppose you say that the mind consciousness is produced because of the mind. In your mind, there certainly must be thoughts. In the organ of your mind, you certainly will have some kind of thinking, and it is these thoughts of yours which give expression to your mind. They bring forth the mind consciousness of the organ of the mind. If there are no dramas before you, dramas before you means your present thoughts. If you are not thinking, if you haven't any thoughts, the mind does not give rise to anything. In the organ of your mind. There are no defining objects of dramas, no thoughts, no drama can arise. Apart from conditions, it has no shape. Apart from these causes and conditions, the mind and the defining objects, the mind consciousness has no shape. There basically is no form or shape because the mind is conditioned by dramas. So then, what is its appearance? It has none. Apart from the mind that has its own conditions, there is no form or shape. Thus, what use would the consciousness be? When there is no form or shape, then where is the consciousness? What ability does it have to create its own function as a consciousness? Sutra, moreover, is your consciousness awareness the same as your mind organ, with its capacity to understand and make distinctions? Or is it different? If it were the same as the mind, it would be the mind. How could it be something else that arises? If it were different from the mind, it should thereby be devoid of consciousness. If there were no consciousness, what would it arise from the mind? If there were conditions, how would it differ from the mind? Since it is by nature neither the same nor different, how can the realm be established? Commentary: The Buddha said to Ananda, "Moreover, is your consciousness awareness the same as your mind organ, with its capacity to understand and make distinctions, or is it different? That is, are the natures of your conscious mind and the organ of your mind the same? If it were the same as the mind, it would be the mind. You may say that the conscious mind is the same as the organ of the mind." But what is the same as the organ of the mind is the organ of the mind and cannot be called the consciousness. How could it be something else that arises? If the mind consciousness is the organ of the mind, how can you say the consciousness arises within the organ of the mind? If it were different from the mind, it should thereby be devoid of consciousness. Different from the mind means the same as defining objects of dramas. Defining objects of dramas have no ability to make distinctions. The organ of your mind has the ability to make distinctions. The consciousness ha- also has the ability to make distinctions. If it is、uh, different from the mind, if it were produced from the mind, it would not be the same as the mind. If it were not the same, it would have no consciousness. If there were consciousness, if you say there is consciousness. 
How would it differ from your mind? How can your mind join, know your own mind? Since it is by nature neither the same nor different, neither nature is possible, how can a film be established? You say that your consciousness and the organ of the mind are the same, but that doesn't work. You say they are different, but that doesn't work either. Neither case is possible, and since they are impossible, how can you set up a realm in the midst of them and say there is a mind consciousness realm? Sutra, suppose it were produced because of the mind of the dharmas. None of the, the dharmas of the world exist apart from the five defining objects. Consider the dharmas of form, the dharmas of sound, the dharmas of smell, the dharmas of taste, and the dharmas of touch. Nature has a clearly distinguishable appearance and is matched with one of the five organs. They are not what the mind takes in. Commentary. Suppose it were produced because of dramas. You may want to say that the mind consciousness is produced because of dramas, since the mind is conditioned by dramas, but none of the dramas of the world exist apart from the five defiling objects. The world here refers to the sentient world and the material world. None of the dharmas in these worlds is apart from the two realms of forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and objects of touch. Consider the dharmas of form, the dharmas of sound, the dharmas of smell, the dharma of taste, and the dharmas of touch. You should take a look at them. Each has a clearly distinguishable appearance forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and objects of touch all have their own appearances which are very clear and is matched with one of the five organs. They are opposite the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. The five organs are matched with the five defiling objects. They are not what the mind takes in. They do not belong to the organ of your mind. Sutra, suppose your consciousness were indeed produced through a reliance on dramas. Take a closer look at them now. What does each and every drama look like? Commentary, your mind consciousness has no connection with the first five defining objects. Now, suppose your consciousness were indeed produced through a reliance on dramas. Perhaps you believe that the defining objects of dramas produce the mind consciousness. As you now take a close look at them now, you should contemplate them carefully and in detail. Take a good look, close look. What does each and every drama look like? What are the dramas which can produce the mind consciousness like? Are they apparent or are they non-apparent? Sutra, underlying the characteristics of form and emptiness, movement and stillness, penetration and obstruction, unity and separation, and production and extinction, there is nothing at all. Commentary, if you depart from the defining objects of form and emptiness, movement and stillness, penetration and obstruction, unity and separation, and production and extinction, these various dramas, there's nothing at all. Underlying means to have no connection with the dramas just mentioned. If you depart from these characteristics and break all connections with them, there is nothing at all. No matter how you look at it, it is to be feared you won't come up with anything. The defining objects of dramas are invisible, so you may look for their appearance, but you cannot find it. Sutra, when there is production, then form, emptiness, and all dharmas are produced. When there is extinction, then form, emptiness, and all dharmas are extinguished. Since what is causes does not exist, if those causes produce the consciousness, what appearance does the consciousness assume? If there is nothing discernible about the consciousness, how can a realm be established for it? Commentary when there is production, then form, emptiness, and all dharmas are produced. If the dharmas of form, emptiness, and the like mentioned above are produced, they are produced simultaneously. When there is extinction, then form, emptiness, and all dharmas are extinguished. When there is extinction, forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, 
and dramas are all extinguished at the same time. Since what is causal does not exist, if those causes produce the consciousness, what appearance does the consciousness assume? What is causal refers to the defiling objects of dramas. They are gone. You cannot find them. Since the defiling objects of dramas are gone, how can there be consciousness? Basically, it does not exist. Basically, the defiling objects of dramas which are produced haven't any substance or nature of their own. Thus, there where will you go to find the consciousness? The consciousness basically cannot exist either. Suppose the consciousness did exist, what would its appearance be? What is the consciousness like? Does it have an appearance or not? If there is nothing discernible about the consciousness, since it has no appearance that can be found, how can a realm be established for it? The consciousness doesn't even have an, any characteristics. How can you set up a realm for it? Therefore, the realm of the mind consciousness does not exist either. Sutra, therefore, you should know that as to the mind and dramas being the conditions that produce the realm of the mind consciousness, none of the three places exist. Thus, the three aspects of the mind, dramas, and the realm of the mind do not have their origin in causes and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Commentary Therefore, you should know, because of this ananda, you should understand this principle that, as to the mind and dramas being the conditions that produce the realm of the mind consciousness, none of the three places exist. You basically cannot find a mind realm and you cannot find a mind consciousness realm, nor can you find a realm of dramas. These three places among the 18 realms are all non-existent. Thus, the three aspects of the mind, dramas, and the realm of the mind, the organ of the mind, the defiling objects of dramas, and the mind consciousness realm, these three do not have their origin in causes and conditions. Basically, they do not belong to what is included among dramas of cause and conditions, nor do their natures arise spontaneously. Nor do they belong to what is said to be spontaneous by adherence to externalist sects. What are they then? The mind, the defiling object of dharmas, and the mind consciousness produced in their midst are all one part of the nature of wonderful true suchness of the treasury of the first come one. Sutra Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, the first common has often spoken of the mixture and union of causes and conditions, saying that the transformations of everything in the world are created from the mixing and uniting of the four elements. Commentary Ananda again said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, the first common has often spoken, the first common you are always talking about the drama of the mixture and union and the drama of causes and conditions. You say that the transformations of everything in the world, the world again refers to the sentient world and the material world. All kinds of different circumstances and change are created from the mixing and uniting of the four elements. What are the four elements? They are earth, water, fire, and wind. People's bodies are a combination of the four elements. How is it that the body is composed of the four elements? The places in our bodies which are hard and solid belong to the element earth. The warmth in our bodies belongs to the element fire. Saliva, tears, and mucus belong to the element water. Our breath belongs to the element wind. Why we are alive, our body is under our control. But after we die, the four elements disperse. The warmth in our bodies returns to the element fire, the moisture returns to the element water, the solace returns to the element earth, our breath returns to the element wind. People do not understand about the body, want to have it in all that it does. What they don't know is that in this way the true nature becomes a slave to a false form.
Every day, one is upside down, toiling and desperately rushing back and forth. Ultimately, what's it all for? Ultimately, what meaning is there in it? You ask people this, and they are like Ananda, mouth agape and speechless. They can't come up with a reason, because people do not understand about the body. They spend all their energy on a dead thing. They don't apply their effort to a living thing. What dead thing is being referred to? Although they are still alive, our bodies may be considered already dead. What living thing is being referred to? Although we are not aware that it is alive, our spirit is young and full of life. It is our original existence, Buddha nature. But people don't know that they should investigate their own Buddha nature, and they apply effort to their bodies instead. From morning to night, they help the body get good things to eat. They are controlled by their body. They help the body get fine clothes to wear. Just what is this body anyway? I will tell all of you, and whether you admit it or not, is your business. If someone likes to drink wine, then the body becomes a wine sack. If someone likes to eat fine food, then the body becomes a bread basket. If someone likes to wear fine clothing, the body becomes a clothes horse. It isn't anything to grasp onto. Don't look upon it as so important. But you can't put it down. You can't see through it. Though you can't see through it, and though you can't put it down, when you die and the four limbs disperse, you will have to see through what you couldn't see through. Time was for no one. You can never say to time, "Wait a minute for me. Wait a bit. It will not wait." So, Chua, why does a first come one reject causes and conditions and spontaneity as well? I do not know how to understand your meaning now. Commentary, Buddha, you've said that everything in the world comes forth from and is created from the causes and conditions of the mixing and uniting of the four elements. Why is it now that you say that causes and conditions and spontaneity are all incorrect? Ananda's attachments are quite strong. In the past, he has heard. The Buddha explained the principle of causes and conditions. Basically, that was a provisional teaching, a provisional, clever expedient. It was not true and actual. Now the Buddha explains the true and actual Dharma door, and Ananda does not believe it. He firmly believes in the expedient Dharma door that the Buddha explained in the past, and in turn it doubts the true and actual Dharma door. So he asked. Why does the first common reject the cause, the cause and conditions, and spontaneity as well? Buddha, you have criticized causes and conditions, and spontaneity, and pronounced them incorrect. Isn't that contradicting yourself? You are destroying the very principles which you yourself established. You are refuting your own thesis. I do not know how to understand your meaning now. I don't see what principle. This is now. What dharma door does it belong to? I don't understand. Sutra, please be so compassionate as to instruct us living beings in the final meaning of the middle way in the dharmas which are not idle theories. Commentary, please be so compassionate. I now only hope that the Buddha will sympathize with us, bring forth compassion towards us living beings. As to instruct us living beings in the final meaning of the middle way, in the dharma door which does not joke around, we want an explanation of the truth of the dharmas which are not idle theories. What is meant by idle theories? All the dharma doors of the provision of Vihago and of the teachings of the externalist sects are called idle theories. The present explanation of the real Vihago. The explanation of the true and actual dharma door is called the final meaning of the middle way. The middle way does not fall into emptiness, nor does it fall into existence. The spontaneity taught by externalist sects falls into emptiness. Causes and conditions belong to existence. Now it is neither emptiness nor existence that is being explained. 
it is the final meaning of the middle way, a dharma door which is not an idle theory. Sutra, the wound honored one then told Ananda, "You have renounced the small vehicle dharmas of the sub-heroes and those enlightened to conditions, and have resolved to diligently seek unsurpassed body. Because of that, I will now explain the foremost truth to you." Commentary: The wound honored one, the Buddha then told Ananda, "You have renounced the small vehicle dharmas of the sub-heroes." And those enlightened conditions, you have already decided to renounce the drama doors of the two vehicles of the sound hero, and those enlightened conditions, the dramas of the angamas, and have resolved to diligently seek unsurpassed body. You now diligently seek the unsurpassed way to enlightenment, the drama of the bodhisattva. Because of that, I will now explain the foremost truth to you. I will explain the drama door of the real、uh, appearance to you. The foremost truth is the real appearance. One, the real appearance, which is without an appearance. Two, the real, real appearance, which is not without an appearance. Three, the real appearance, which is without an appearance and yet not without an appearance, although they are said to be. Three kinds. Their one kind, the real appearance. The real appearance has no appearance, and yet there is nothing which does not appear. Within this is the principle of true emptiness and wonderful existence. If one explains it to the ultimate point, there basically isn't anything at all. Yet within that nothing at all, there is everything. So nothing at all is true emptiness and. The existence of everything is a wonderful existence. The principle now being explained will lead to an explanation of the seven elements: earth, water, fire, wind, emptiness, perception, and consciousness. As pervading the Dharma realm, the five skandhas, the six entrances, the twelve places, the eighteen realms discussed before, is. Explained the wonderful true suchness nature of the treasury of the first comma, but it was not said that they pervaded the Dharma realm. So, Trab, why do you still bind yourself up in the idle theories and false thoughts current among people of the world? Commentary: The Buddha said to Ananda, "You have just decided to renounce the Dharma doors of the small vehicle to bring forth the result for the great vehicle." The body sat by the hegel and to seek unsurpassed body. Therefore, I will instruct you in the principle of the real appearance. Why? The tone here is one of accusation. Do you still bind yourself up in the idle theories, the wrong explanation of doctrines which are not true and false thoughts current among people of the world? It's just as if you took a rope and tied yourself up with it. You cannot get free. You cannot be liberated. Why do you want to be like that? What I am explaining to you is the foremost truth. Why is it just you don't understand? Sutra. Although you are very learned, you are like someone who can discuss medicines but cannot distinguish the real medicine when it is placed before you. The first comment says that you are truly pitiful. Commentary: Although you are very learned, Ananda, although you have a strong memory and have memorized many sutras, you are like someone who can discuss medicines. You are learned, but what is it like? You are some.、Uh, you are like someone who can recite a medicine text, and can say which medicines cure which illnesses and which medicines have what effect. Like someone who can recite the Yao Sing Fu. You too have memorized well, but you are like someone who cannot distinguish a real medicine when it is placed before you. When you see the true medicine, you don't recognize it. You cannot tell if it's the true one. Why can't you make these distinctions? Because all you do is advocate intellectual talk. Chain. You can talk about it very well, but when you investigate the truth, you don't understand. 
the first common say is that you are truly beautiful. Sutra, listen attentively now as I explain this point in detail for you and also for those of the future who cultivate the great vehicle so that you all can penetrate to the real appearance. Ananda was silent and awaited the Buddha's holy instruction. Commentary, listen attentively now. Don't be confused any longer. You should pay attention. Be alert. And listen as I explain this point in detail for you, for your sake, Ananda. I will now distinguish and explain it. I will divide and categorize and explain it for you in great detail, and also for those of the future. You and I here are included among those of the future. It is now the future that the Buddha then referred to. We now form the assemblies of what was the future then. Who cultivate the great vehicle? We are now cultivating the great vehicle, not the small vehicle, in order to penetrate to the real appearance, to understand the principle of the real appearance. As was explained before, real appearance is no appearance. With no appearance, what still exists, everything exists. No appearance means that it cannot have empty, any empty false appearance. The real appearance is totally real. Ananda was silent. Ananda heard that the Buddha was going to explain the principle of the real appearance, but he didn't know what was meant. The real appearance was a new term when the Buddha brought it up at that point, and Ananda didn't understand what it mean, what it meant. So he awaited the Buddha's holy instruction. On tiptoe, with his eyes glued on the Buddha, he waited for him to speak the Dharma.